skull. It's not a human skull, but in terms of hardness and density, it's remarkably similar. And I've come to this amazing incineration unit to see what happens when we put this skull in the furnace. This incinerator is used to cremate animal carcasses and can reach temperatures in excess of 1,000 degrees Celsius. And the skull is going to spend several hours inside. I'm curious to see how much will remain. I expected I'd have a pile of ashes here, but in fact, it looks very much as it did before. Now, in these circumstances, what usually happens is that the bony remains are put through something called a cremulator, which grinds them up into what we would think ashes look like. And what I'm gonna do now is try and mimic that process with this hammer and see if I can destroy what's left of this skull. Now that's what Parkman's killer would have had to do. But Webster failed to complete the job. Inside his laboratory furnace was a partial jawbone and some teeth. And it was these tiny fragments of a human being that would completely... Today, forensic dentists are called upon in the most tragic of circumstances. In situations where only dental records can confirm the identity of the dead. But dentistry can do more than just identify the victims of crime or disaster. Here at the University of Cardiff Dental Hospital, forensic scientists are turning their attention toward the criminal. It's not unusual for a killer to leave bite marks on their victim, and these can be used as evidence in murder cases. The idea is that if you can marry the bite marks to the teeth that made them, you can catch the killer. But recently in the USA, certain convictions that were secured using this kind of evidence have been overturned, and the whole reliability of bite mark analysis called into question. To demonstrate why, I'm leaving some bite marks of my own on this clay arm and taking it to forensic dentist Romina Karabot for analysis. So first of all, we've got um, different pressure that has been applied. So some of them have gone quite deep, whereas others, uh, like what we've got here, is stayed on the surface of the clay. We've also got a curved surface here, and that will affect the shape of the print that the tooth would leave. To analyse bite marks, forensic dentists take high-resolution photographs. But a 2D image doesn't represent a three-dimensional surface accurately. So getting precise measurements from a curved body part like an arm is difficult. It's further complicated by the skin itself, which swells and bruises around the mark. Combined, these factors can make it extremely difficult to make an accurate bite mark analysis. And that's what makes this type of evidence easy to question in a court of law. But imaging specialist Sam Evans is working with Romina to develop a new 3D technique that could provide a more accurate way of measuring bite marks. This is a modified um, SLR camera uh, with a stereoscopic lens on the front that takes uh, a pair of images. So then software that's designed specifically for this camera can create 3D images. Sam feeds his photos into specialist imaging software that produces a 3D model. This means the bite mark can be analyzed much more accurately than with a simple photo. 
What are we looking at here, Romina? The software has constructed the curvature of the arm with the bite mark on it. And so now we can rotate it around and we can analyse each different part of the arm. When you're actually using this technology, how do you measure the tooth to see if the tooth fits the bite? Say, for example, I want to take a measurement of the width of the arch, the distance between the mark of the left canine and the right canine. Then we're going to just draw a line there. And because the camera is calibrated, uh, together with the software, facilitates and increases the chances that I am going to be as accurate, as precise, rather, as possible in, in my conclusions and analysis. This work shows how forensic science is constantly seeking new ways to establish identity. It's long been a defining characteristic of the field. Next time, crime scenes. I'll discover how mud can catch a killer. I'll try to make sense of blood spatter patterns. And I'll scrutinise the single thumbprint that hanged two men. Delve deeper with The Open University and find out more about the science behind forensics. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash forensics and follow the links to The Open University.